That is what they're trying to do. They are showing you in your heart, my sister in humanity. You know there is only one true God. You know that. And you know that one true God is not this tripod. Even though the Quran or the Bible does not say anywhere that this tripod is not God. But still, you have a mechanism inside you. Isn't that true? You have a mechanism inside you in which you know that even though my scripture does not say this tripod is God, I can be certain that this is not God. God has given you the intellect. From that intellect, you would know that Jesus Christ, who went down on his knees, his forehead on the ground, worshipping God in his humility, you know that that is not God on earth. It cannot be. Someone who worships God, showing his utmost humility, going down on the ground, his forehead, and you are told to believe, Alleluia, that's the God and worship him. Your heart and your mind, when you critically think and examine, you will see that can never be God. You can never accept him. In fact, what did Christ say? I'm going to my father and your father, to my God and your God. But no Christians are led to think, what do you mean he's going to his God? There is only one God, so how can he go to his God? There will be two gods. So you may have been within the gatherings of Christian friends and families from your environment, but we request you, my sister in humanity, God has given every one of us in the ability that we can use our intellect. Use it critically and then reject the worship of false gods and reject the worship of creation, reject the worship of angels, reject the worship of prophets, reject the worship of messengers. But come back to the worship of God of everything. God who created human beings, worship him. God who created the animals, worship God. Worship that God who created the heavens and the earth in six days and on the seventh day did not get tired and needing rest. That is the God the Quran is telling you to come back to. Not the God that people have somehow changed their message and their belief system. God created heavens and the earth. A religion that you perhaps follow tells you God refreshed, rested and refreshed. God doesn't get tired that he needs refreshing. Quran says, La sinatu wala naum. Neither sleep nor slumber touches him. So how can you even believe that God comes down, gets beaten and puts on a cross and gets hanged and dies? Your heart and your mind is something that should reject this and say that that cannot be God. God is the creator of everything. He has power over all things. So I want to ask you a question. So far what I've said, is there anything that didn't make sense to you? I didn't ask you that. People are free to believe what they want to believe. No one should compel anyone to believe in whatever they want to believe. But what I have explained so far from the initial hadith about a person, even though he is of that skin color, of that complexion, he needs to be obeyed if he becomes our leader. To the point we talked about who God is, how we know through our heart and the mind who should be our God worthy of worship. Is there anything that didn't make sense to you? Hmm? Right, so it made sense to you. So if that makes sense to you, why are you not embracing this truth? I don't believe it, neither do you. Oh, I do believe it. Okay. That's when you say, okay, let me, let, me, let me explain my answer. Let me explain my answer. Why I even included you in that. Okay, that would be, it's a bit unfair to speak on your behalf, but let me tell you what I actually meant. And then you can say at least, this is what you uh, were trying to say. We as Muslims believe, God does things which befits his majesty. He doesn't things, do things which are ungodly. For example, God 
his own knowledge. He doesn't forget. So if somebody says, can God forget your name for 20 minutes? You would say, yes, because God can do anything. I would say no, because he's unknowledgeable. Unknowledgeable means there is not a single fraction of a time absent from his knowledge, including that 20 minutes where God is supposed to be ignorant of. God is ever living. That means he will never cease to exist. So if somebody says, can God cease to exist tomorrow if he wanted to? You would say, yes, God can do anything. I would say no, because he is ever living means he will be always living and never cease to exist. So we affirm as Muslims and you too, as a person of critical mind, critical thinking, we affirm God which befits his nature, his majesty. We cannot say God is all loving, but tomorrow he can be all hate if he wanted to. It makes no sense. If you affirm one set of attributes, the opposite you'll reject. So if somebody says, oh, can God become a woman? You would say no. In your initial understanding, you would say yes. But in this understanding now, as I've explained, you would say no. Because a woman or a man or a tree, whatever, these are all limited, finite, dependent. God is neither. Our God is neither of them. It doesn't befit his majesty to become in a finite form when he is not bound by anything. It doesn't become any, it doesn't make any sense or befit the majesty of God that he becomes someone who is limited when he has no limits of his attributes, absolute attributes, absolute attributes of perfection, no limits. So that's what I mean by God to become a man or a woman, it goes against his majesty. It doesn't befit him. It doesn't befit, it's like saying, can I put God inside a bottle and I close the lid and he's inside it? Can I put God, ask yourself that question. Can God enter this bottle and you close the lid, he's just inside that bottle and nowhere else. According to your understanding, what would that be? Yes or no? Explain your way. I'll be very honest, I, I don't like using your analogies because it, it kind of confuses me. So I'd probably not but, but somebody says God can become a man or in a certain form. Look, yeah, I'd rather choose not to answer because I don't understand. No problem, so, no problem. Yeah. But if you think about it critically, that's, that's what I'm trying to raise within you, critical thinking. God to come inside the bottle and that said he's inside this bottle, when when you know that God is greater than everything that you can imagine. Everything that you can imagine. And by asking, can he become so small out of his majesty and his greatness that it becomes inside the bottle, you would say it makes no sense. God is not confined by time and space. He's the creator of time and space. And yet you're trying to restrict and limit God within a time scale paradigm. It makes no sense. That is why God coming down in a human form, the belief in incarnation, we would say it's not a coherent belief system. Because what happened to God's absolute knowledge? When the human being is now God, or God now the human being, incarnated into flesh, there are two possibilities. Either God is still unknowledgeable, or he has lost some of his knowledge because now he's become a human being. We can go through each of this route, route and you will see that none of them makes any sense. No one knows the hour. This man who's supposed to be God incarnate, Jesus Christ, the son of Mary, he is saying of that day and of that hour, no one knows, not even the angels in heaven, not even the son, but only the father. So if he was God, unknowledgeable to begin with, he would say, I know it too. So does my father. But he says, no one knows, not even me. So what happened to his knowledge? Can you put a lock to God's knowledge and limit God's knowledge? When we say God is unknowledgeable, is there any fraction of a millisecond that God doesn't know of? He knows everything. So when he says, I don't know about that hour, how can he be unknowledgeable in the beginning first? 
best way I can understand that side because I wasn't, I'm not in Jesus' mind, but the best way I can understand it is that, like, we know as Christians, this is God the Spirit, like the Son, but He became flesh. Now, we understand that Him becoming flesh, He had to humble Himself, and He did not have full access to the knowledge that He had before when He was with the Father. So, for example, me, I don't, I don't remember what I ate two weeks ago. I honestly don't. There's some people here who don't even remember like what they ate this morning. Maybe, maybe you might, but you know. So that's the best way I can explain it. But now me saying, oh, I don't understand this. That is not now going to make me change my complete belief and say I'm going to throw this in the bin. Because even in school, I didn't really understand the algebra, but that did not mean that I'm now going to give up in maths. I'm not going to do the test. I'm still going to try. I'm going to try and figure out. If I don't try and figure out, I'm going to ask someone who has more knowledge than me. And then if the answer that they give me makes sense, then that's the answer I will accept. Yeah, very good approach. We are not asking you to something, to, uh, giving you understanding. What I'm giving you, when you use critical thinking that critical thinking will tell you today 50 years later it will still be the same answer why because the infinite the infinite can never become finite by definition the infinite is not finite so whatever you have told you now it will be true tomorrow 50 years later every time all the time in your life friend the infinite by definition is not finite it will never become the infinite will never become finite. So when you say, I don't understand, but I know that he limited himself. Um, he had, did not have access to, but think about what you're saying. God has knowledge, but he has not access to his knowledge. I'm talking about the human side. I'm not talking about the spirit. I'm talking about the human side. Is this human also possessor of divinity? Or is it just human? He's supposed to be God to man same time God and same time man so the divinity is not absent the divinity is present the God man concept is such that he's hundred percent God and hundred percent man not fifty percent God and fifty percent man so if it hundred percent God means he has hundred percent of his knowledge but he's also hundred percent human so that means at times he will not so when so is when he's saying of that day no one knows no human beings no creation no angels not the sun he didn't say it's just me as a human he's simply saying not even the sun but only think about it if i say no one here knows about algebra except you when i use this exclude exclusivity exclusion only you means not also him and you it's only you so no one knows only the father means and david knows as well John knows as well, Abdullah knows as well. No, it excludes everyone else. So when the scripture, your scripture says, no one knows, Father, in, sorry, the angels, everything else, including the Son, but only the Father, that means the only person who knows when the world's gonna come to an end, is what comes after only, is the Father. The Holy Spirit doesn't know because it excludes the Holy Spirit from everything else because it says only the Father. So when it says in John 3.16, God so loved the world that he gave his only begotten son. Does he mean he has other begotten sons? When you use the word only, you would say no. Only means he's our only begotten son means one. So when it says only the Father knows, it means no one else knows. So that's why I'm saying Jesus Christ in John 17.3, he says, this is eternal life that you should know that you, referring to God, the Father, you are the only true God and Jesus Christ whom you have sent. So who did Christ say the only true God is? If you ask any Christian and after this discussion, go ask your Christian friends. Who is the only true God? They will say, it's the Father, it's the Son, it's the Holy Spirit. There are three persons in one. According to Christ, According to Christ, the only true God is the Father. And how many person is the Father? One person. So according to Christ, the only true God is one person. Who's the Father? According to Trinity Christians, is three. So I'm not going to go any further. I don't want to somehow... Um, it's, not, it's not three. It's not three. Because... I'm not very good with like, explaining it in proper like, English. But no problem.
Jesus is not the Father, the Father is not the Son, the Holy Spirit is not the Son nor the Father. But for it to be God, you need three. That's why as Christians, we pray to the Father through Jesus Christ in the Spirit. You cannot pray to God without praying through Jesus Christ and in the Spirit. That's why it's not three gods, it's one. Maybe it's three sides. I'm, I'm going to be very careful because I know personas and there's different words and they all mean different things. Yeah. But there's three but it's one. It, it makes so much sense in my head but I'm not okay. very good at explaining So things that you said, just to understand what you said. When you have the Father, Son and the Holy Spirit, they're depending on each other. If you have in a set, if you study in mathematics set, set, set theory, a set in which the members are dependent, the whole set is dependent, not independent. If you have, let me explain to you. If you have dependent plus dependent plus dependent plus dependent, doesn't matter how many things you add which are dependent, in their sum, they always will be dependent. The sum of dependent things will always be dependent. But God is supposed to be independent. So if you say they are dependent on each other, together they cannot be independent. Even by mathematics, they cannot be independent. Secondly, you see, there's a difference between one, two in one, three in one, four in one, five in twenty, and so on. To explain to you in, in, in simple terms. Is two in one the same as three in one? They're not the same. Is one the same as two in one? Exactly. Is one the same as three in one? They're not. So either you believe in one God or you believe in three in one God. You can't have both. That's that's using like That's the critical thinking God has given us. Yeah, but I know God has given us a lot of critical thinking, but if you use critical thinking, you cannot think that God can come into a bush, that God can speak through a bush. No, God. That, that's, no, that's what I'm saying, that's the difference. Just to clarify that, when someone speaks from that phone, imagine you have a friend and God you hear... in her, but she's not God. No, 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 I'm explaining what you just said. When your friend, you hear the voice in the phone, is your friend inside the phone? Your friend is through your phone, but no, your friend is through the phone. The friend, friend is, is not inside. Not the phone. Good, good. Your friend is not the phone and not inside the phone. So God can speak from a burning bush to Musa alayhi salam Moses. He doesn't need to be inside the burning bush. He can project his voice if he wants to. Friend projects your his voice or her voice through your phone. Your friend, he or she, does not need to be inside the phone. So this is not something like critical thinking will make us disbelieve in God, how God created, sorry, spoke to Moses the prophet. No, we can understand that easily. But what critical thinking will do is, it will let you to disregard and reject and shun things which are nonsensical. Like God becomes other than what he is. God becomes a banana and no longer God. You would say, it doesn't make any sense. God becomes a banana and someone, a monkey eats it and that's it. End of God. You would say, it makes no sense. Yeah, but it's, it's the same thing as what I said. Like, our brain can only go to a certain level of understanding. And this is what I'm saying, it's the difference. Because even in the Bible it tells you that you can only understand the things of the Spirit if you are in the Spirit. So yes, God gave us critical thinking. God, God has given us a brain to think. But there is a certain level where you cannot understand. You have to ask God for help. If not, why, why would you need yeah. to pray to God? Yeah, I, I agree. I, I agree with you wholeheartedly. That is why our faith needs to be based on our scripture coming from a prophet and a messenger. That's our foundation of faith. When our scripture says, God created in six days heaven and the earth, and seven day he rested and refreshed, you would say, yeah, I believe in it. Or you would say, that doesn't make sense. How would you differentiate between a scripture of God which says this, and another scripture which, which says, God doesn't need resting and refreshing. Your intellect that God has given you, it will reject one and accept the other. You are not going to say, um, there's so much to learn about God. You would say, no, outright. The correct concept of God would be that God doesn't need refreshing because he doesn't get tired. The correct understanding of God is 
he would never forget because he is all knowledgeable. So anything a scripture which claims to be a scripture says this, this is how you will determine the authenticity of a scripture whether they're from God or not. Otherwise, anyone can believe in Harry Potter to be from God. Even though it doesn't say it's from God, but it says, look, it doesn't have to. I know it's from God because it changed my life. I watched that film and it changed my life. Emotional things cannot be personal things. Experiences cannot be the arbitrator of truth. Truth is something that needs to make sense in your heart and in your mind. That's why the first commandment is you should worship your Lord, your God, with all your heart and all your mind. Christians often forget that part. Yeah, but it also says that we can only worship God in spirit. So, like I said, God has given us a mind to think. Do you know what they mean by spirit? It means he hasn't got a physical form. It means for the Holy Spirit. No, no. So you when when you worship God in spirit, spirit means you don't imagine God is like any form. Because God is unlike anything. Worshiping in spirit means, say for example, speaking in tongues, that's you worshiping in spirit. Like the tongue is a language that goes straight to God, so that's in the spirit. So yes, the mind, heart, soul, everything, mm -hmm. but there's also the element of spirit. So we can't disregard the spirit and say, no, this has to make sense to me, because a lot of things don't make sense to us, but that doesn't mean it's not the truth. We just haven't actually researched properly into it and tried to figure it out. Because that's the truth is not subjective. Absolutely, truth is objective. And that's why truth can be independently ascertained by looking and reason without our preconceived biases. So if you leave your biases as much as possible, it's not entirely possible to leave all your biases, but as much as possible. And then you say, look, I may have been born in a Muslim family, for example. Then would I have believed in the Bible like I do today? Ask yourself. I'm not biased though because I was an atheist for a long time. So it's not biased. If you are an atheist at one time, so you've been using critical thinking to become an atheist, right? Yes, but then I've realized that there's more to life than just. I can't just think yeah. that it comes from a big bang theory that makes no sense. Because then what caused that to happen? Something caused that to happen. Sure. So then I've realized that there is a spiritual, there's a something spiritual. It's not just about my brain. Okay. So. The Christian concept of God is three in one God, right? Yeah. Is there a hierarchy? What does Jesus say? My father is same as I, less than I or greater than I? I am a father one, so there's no hierarchy. Good. Does he also say my father is greater than I? Where? In the Bible. Does he? It shouldn't say that because they are one, right? I, I do know it. But what I'm saying is, it shouldn't say that because if they are one, they should be all the same, equal. So does it say in the Bible? Yeah. What's the verse? Uh, I'll just bring it up to you. Let me get the... Uh, <laughs> I mean, can you promise not to heckle? Because I know you know more than me. You don't want any, any reference for anything. You can give us your point. Just if I don't know how to answer something, but don't heckle. I don't entertain hecklers. He's a heckler. No, I've asked him not to heckle. I've asked and he's insulting too, so I don't entertain hecklers. I mean, so this is biblehub.com. John 14, which version? NIV, fine. You heard me say, say, I'm going away and I'm going back to you. If you love me, you would be glad that I'm so going I to the Father, for said. the Father is greater than I. Okay. Any translation you look at it, any you like, King James, the Father, my Father is greater than I, um, NASB, Father is greater than I, yeah, yeah. and so on. I'm not so so I'm now, saying. so fine. So there is a hierarchy. And that's where the problem is. No, I think in the Trinity there's no hierarchy, but what I'm saying is with Jesus, I know you've heard this a lot of times, but with Jesus, like you said, um, hypostatic human, right? Fully divine and fully human, right? So the fully human, God is way greater than the fully human side. God does not go 
go to the toilet, God doesn't eat all of that. But the fully human side did. And that's why he was fully human. Because he had to come from Mary. He had to, you know, be breastfed by Mary. He had to experience the human um, the human perspective. But he's fully divine because of also of loads of things that he's, like he's done. No other person is allowed to forgive sins. Only Jesus Christ is allowed to forgive sins. Um, no other, um, I mean, correct me if I'm wrong, but no other uh, person has risen someone from the dead. Okay, so, so let's let's address some of those things. Time. Let's address some of those things. There are many people who have raised people from the dead. Paul is one of them as well. Okay. Paul raised from the dead. Okay, I stand corrected. Then. That's okay, no problem, no problem. In terms of forgiving sins, the Lord's Prayer. Do you remember? Do, do you yeah. recall? Yeah. How does the Lord's Prayer go? Uh, what is it? Give us this day our daily, daily bread and forgive us for our trespasses as we forgive those who trespass against us. As we forgive those, those who trespass against us. Yeah, yeah. So human beings can forgive. Okay. No, but in terms of um, forgiving our sins, I cannot forgive you for not saying God forbid you do this, but I cannot forgive you for killing someone. Only God can forgive. That's why you ask God for forgiveness. You can't ask, I mean, maybe you can go to a judge. So, if, so if God gave you the authority to forgive sins, would that make you God? It's only been given to Jesus Christ no. though. If God gave you the authority, but would it make you? Because I'm not Jesus It's not Christ. about, hypothetically, if God gave the authority to Moses, to prophets and messengers, for example, would that make them God? The answer is no. If no, God gives an authority, so to that, but, but do you follow far? God gives authority to someone to perform miracles, it doesn't make them God. God gives them the authority to forgive sins, it would not make them God. The question you said about... That's one of the things though, but I'm saying there's so much more to why Jesus is God. Jesus, listen, Jesus did not come on earth to now come and prove his status. He was on earth for the will that was already there. Oh, you guys are... Okay. No, you're, you're watching? Go ahead. Yeah. I've already got 10 cameras on you. What? Um, I have a question on there too. Um, yeah, so Jesus wasn't on earth to now be so boast about his his stance. Do you get what I'm saying? So he was here first and foremost to make the Jews realise that where they like they've just gone astray, right? So that's why he said, I've not come to abolish the law, but that through uh, through me it will be fulfilled. So um here's the scripture by the way, Matthew 28. Matthew 28, 28. Exactly. So this just goes back to what I was saying before. Fully human, so he had to humble himself. Like he just gave me a verse. Who's humbling? The man or God? No, Jesus had to humble himself. When you say so he's God, man and God, he had to humble himself so human. explain to me. Because he's God and man. Because he's God and man, right? Who is humbling himself? Is it the God aspect humbling or the man aspect humbling? Man is humble anyway. Man is never equal to God in any way, shape, or form. Always lower in status. In, in attributes and, and so on. So man is already humble. So is he humbling as God? Is he humble as God? No. Him him coming as a form, as a human, that's already it's, it's a sign of humility. Why he did not come and boast that listen, I am God, that's a sign of humility. Jesus washed his disciples' feet, that's a sign of humility. No, in terms of his divinity and humanity. What is being humbled? What is being limited and restricted? The human side, humanity side, or the div divine side, the divinity? What do you think? Oh, uh, so, I don't know how to answer it, but I know they will. Okay. They can help you. We have no issue with Yeah, but well, he's asking, is it the God or the human version? So, the restricting of the divinity or humanity? Restricting and limiting the divinity or the humanity? What, what did you learn? What is being restricted? Divinity restricted or humanity restricted? Is divinity restricted or humanity of Jesus? That's the question. Well, if divinity itself chooses to withdraw out of itself to form the flesh, then innately he is giving up the ability to enact in some of the right? Right. So what's the answer? Divinity restricted. So in his humanity, Jesus doesn't know this, but in his divinity he does. You see, 
either the restriction, look, the answer needs to be quite clear. As you can see, you've asked him thrice, then no, thrice, you and you still, and it's still. You're looking for a certain answer. No, 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 no. The, answer, the answer we want to clarify this issue, what is being restricted? God's divinity being restricted? Or the human who's been created being restricted? What's, what's, what's being restricted? I want you to ask her a question, right? What's restricted? You can ask them. They seem to be well knowledgeable. In the park, they go on boasting that we know. Can, they can teach you. Go ahead. As a, as a human, there was restrictions that he had. For so humanity is restricted. Like the verse that all Muslims like to bring. Mm. How can he be God if he doesn't know the, the hour? Now, fully human, there's restrictions. Like I said to you, I don't remember why 18 weeks ago. So there's restrictions, but that doesn't mean I didn't eat something two weeks ago. It's just that right now, Maybe I don't remember, or maybe I'm just choosing not to um, access to that part of information. That's why I'm saying I'm fine with not having like an answer. I'm fine with not knowing a hundred percent. That does not now completely make me want to throw away the Bible, forget the whole message, and forget about Jesus. Because there's so much more to what Jesus came to do than to tell us. Listen, tomorrow at 5 p.m. you're gonna die. Like that's not that's not what life. So God, before he created any humans, he was God with his divinity, divine attributes. So my question is very simple, which I need to get a clear answer, is um, without any heckling, right? You said it was quite, we, 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 were, we were having a good conversation, so without any heckling, so I've heard what you just said. So, 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 um, do you see how the conversation is now being heckled? Do you see what's happening? Instead of, dealing with the conversation that we're having, Heckless comes in, who's supposed to be knowledgeable on the subject matter, and then I'm helping you. I don't think it's Heckless. It's okay. Right. Right. They know right. what okay. things you say so, to do Fine. So, God in his divinity, God in his divinity, is the divinity of God being restricted or the human that God created flesh? is his creation. The flesh of Jesus is the creation of God. So, is that being restricted in terms of knowledge, for example, or the divinity of God in his divine nature who is all knowledgeable, that is being restricted. So maybe you can ask them again because they misunderstood. The best way I can answer your question yeah. is that when he became flesh, he restricted himself. This is why we say he humbled himself. What is restricted? The divinity or the humanity? He, they can help you. Because they're supposed to be knowledgeable. They, no, they've helped, let me, let me but you're not answer. like. Sorry, it's fine. Okay. He's gonna keep doing this. Yeah, Mansour, I think, is like getting. Because I don't waffle, as you can realize so far. I am very direct, and I don't want people to waffle around. Am I speaking? Don't derail the conversation. So, so what happened? So, so did the divinity restrict? You have someone to help you if they are able to so did the divinity restrict itself from its divine knowledge and became less than knowledgeable or the human being that was created or incarnated into which is already restricted by anyway but further restricted just allow them all experiential knowledge what, what i would say is that i have answered your question to the best ability that i can now i don't know what answer you're looking for i ask you a direct question yeah i've answered it i said when he became flesh no when, when you said he, had he restrictions. what restricted the divinity or the humanity the divinity wraps itself in flesh therefore it is appropriate for the divinity not to exercise its attributes that's so, right. that's so the divinity restricted yeah. okay do you believe it's possible do you believe it's possible the divine nature of God can limit itself yeah but right wait, 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 wait. if God chooses says. not to do something right is he not limiting it? so God all knowledgeable can become ignorant right you believe that but it's not no it's, it's not about being ignorant it's what? about choosing not to have access or choosing what does at it this mean moment so give me an example. No, saying ignorant it means that like you just don't know it. It's so like it's so when thing. you have no access to knowledge, imagine now God incarnates into human body. Does he have access to all knowledge? Or does he have not access to all knowledge? Is there something that he has no access of? Or to? I mean, according to the Bible, he, at that time he had no access to the time of So he is not all knowledgeable at that time? According to the Bible. Yeah. So, so here is here is the problem. If you are all knowledgeable, 
if you are unknowledgeable, what it means, there is no limit and there is no preventing your access because you know all the time. All knowledgeable. All knowledgeable means no restriction of time, of any time, as I explained before. Does it make sense? It's, like, it's the same thing with you right now. I'm not really sure if you're choosing to like not acknowledge. I'm sure you know this. I've said this about like 10 times now. Mm -hmm. I'm fully divine and fully human. Now, the reason, this is why he was even gone, because how can you be two things? That I'm not arguing even, anything like that okay, at all. Just, just let me finish, because I'm getting something. That's why he's even gone. It's not just about him being able to forgive sins. Two things that don't make sense to me, that shows that he's gone, but there's so much more. Now, fully divine, fully human. When you're human, I've said this already, I don't remember what I ate last week. That does not mean I didn't eat something. Now, Jesus saying, um, and I believe he said this as his human side. Now, him saying he doesn't know the hour or the time, it doesn't mean that as the Trinity, it's, it's not revealed. I'm just saying, as a human side, he said, I don't know. And for me, that's completely fine. It's so, not a big issue. If I've understood you correctly, on his human side, he doesn't know. But in his divine side, he knows. Who knows? Only God knows. What do you know? What I does know the Bible what say? The Bible tells me. So what does the Bible say? That he doesn't know that I so, so, if the human side doesn't know, I have no problem with that because human side is ignorant anyway. No human being is unknowledgeable. But I have a problem if the divine side doesn't know. So if you say the human side didn't know, the divine knew, so you're saying Jesus has two personalities in which, in which, okay. So, so when he says, I don't know, him being divine, he knows. Yeah. I'm not saying that's a fact. I'm well, just, we just so a what? So what is the answer here? No, no, no. I don't speak to hecklers. I don't speak to hecklers. No, I don't, he's not a heckler. He is a heckler. Oh, look, look. This is, no, no. This, this discussion. Um, sorry. This discussion will be over. This discussion will be over the moment Hector comes in. I did not stop you from learning from them if they knew anything about the Bible and Christianity. But I don't speak to them. Okay. Nice talking to you. Um, just bear in mind. Bear in mind. Nice talking. Uh, hold on. Just bear in mind, though. I'm not speaking to you. Bear in mind, though. We have spoken about. We we have spoken about. Look, I don't speak to hecklers, but I did not object. Hecklers providing information to you if they are knowledgeable. But what was demonstrated? What was demonstrated? The hecklers didn't even know anything anyway. Take care. Take care. Look into look into Islam and worship the God who deserves our worship. The God who. It's oh, not worthy of our worship. Just like be at this time. Yeah? Nice speaking to you. Take care. You're going to defend, defend yourself? No. I, speak to you. I don't speak to hecklers. I don't waste my time with hecklers. You should know that, brother.